everybody. Welcome back. My name is Cassie. I am the Evil Secret Ninja, and I talk about books and review books on my channel. So today I am doing my reading update, uh, everything that I finished this week, what I'm currently reading, and what I plan to pick up next. So I finished four books this week, which is a little bit below my average, but they were, I think they were all really big. I believe they were all at least 500 pages or more. So I'm okay with it. So the first book that I finished was Shadowheart by Tad Williams. And this is the final book in the Shadow March trilogy, but it's the fourth book. Apparently it was supposed to be a trilogy and he just kept writing and writing and writing and decided to split the last book in two. Same thing that he did with his other series. So this was kind of like the final battle, the finale, fighting for their lives, fighting for their kingdom, uh, fighting for everything that has been built up in the last three books. And it was a very nuanced fight. There was lots of things going on and everybody had a specific part to play. I was clenching my fists a little bit, wondering what would happen, but it was really great and it came to a great conclusion. I'm certainly glad that I picked up the series. It has been on my radar for a while. Great series. I think Tad Williams, he writes really beautifully. He has really great prose and everything, but his prose doesn't take away from his action. So I think he just has like a really good mix. And I've got some other books of, of his on my TBR and I'll be picking those up at some point. He's certainly up there high on my like favorite fantasy authors. The next one that I finished was the Heroes by Joe Abercrombie and this is the second book in the first Lost Standalones. This book was just a three-day battle and they're going through everything that happens each day, why they're fighting, who they're fighting, and all that kind of stuff and like, I know it's serious. Like this was a serious book. There was a lot of blood and carnage and horrible things but I thought that the things that were funny about it like they just had these little things in there. People were thinking certain things or uh, doing certain things and it, I have to admit I laughed even though I'm like it, it's not really funny but it is. So it would be uh, they're sitting around the campfire before a battle and they're saying like who they're excited to kill and so they're listing off all these people and one guy goes well I want to kill this guy and they go well he's on our side and then he goes well what about this guy I'm like well he's dead. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Or the guy that's swinging his sword in battle and he's swinging his sword and all of a sudden he goes, hey, hey, where'd my arm go? Like he, there was nothing there to cut people down with. And I don't know, just like the way that it was written was kind of funny. I am getting to be a, quite a fan of Joe Abercrombie. I'm liking his work quite a bit. And I will certainly be continuing books in his first law world. The next book that I finished was Morningstar by Pierce Brown and this is the third book in the Red Rising series and this is like the first three books I guess are a complete trilogy because this definitely has uh, the conclusion as to the uprising and the revolution you know the world that they're trying to build this follows a guy who lives in a society that is separated by color and reds are at the bottom they're the slaves golds are at the top and it's about a red that infiltrates the golds and is trying to overthrow their society because it is unjust and because his family and everything have been enslaved from the beginning of time as far as they know and they've been lied to their whole lives one of the things that I took away from it is that whatever color somebody was like they a lot of them really had a lot of passion about who they were and why they did things the golds defended what they were doing to the very end like this is the only way to have a good society uh, even though it was uh, clearly not a just society even the reds who wanted to maintain things the way that they were had a reason for doing that and those that were out trying to create a revolution also had a good reason to do that yeah so i finished that and the last book that i read my son gave it to me. He wanted me to compare it to Uzumaki and that was Attack on Titan Volume 1 by Hajime Ishiyama. And this was the first manga in the Attack on Titan series. It takes the zombie trope to a whole new level. 
One day, seemingly out of the blue, these monsters appear. These giant monsters that go around just eating people. And it appears that they have... It's like they have to eat people. They won't kill or eat any other animal except people. Uh, they just kind of do it for fun. And he asked me to compare it to Uzumaki and say which was worse. And I had to say, well, in Uzumaki, the kind of the difference is like in Attack on Titan, they have hope. They're fighting back. In Uzumaki, they kind of, I mean, how do you fight something that's not necessarily a real entity? So those are all the books that I finished this week. And here's what I'm currently reading. So I'm currently reading Why We Don't Die in Dreams by Debbie Zelo. And this is a detective story. They're obviously chasing a serial killer that's targeting women. And for some reason, the detective on the case is dreaming about saving the women and needing to save them. And the serial killer is targeting women that the detective is familiar with. I don't know. Like, it, it's okay. But there are a lot of things that I'm really struggling with. I don't like the main character. He's very... Uh, kind of super male misogynistic I guess they're trying to say like overall he has kind of a heart of gold but he's definitely got some issues and I also don't like the complete victimization of women and stuff like that that's occurring in it which is common with serial killer tropes and stuff like that so but I don't know that it's done real well this was referred to me by a co-worker and Maybe, I think me and her have a lot of different books that we like, though. Uh, the next one that I'm, the next one I'm currently reading is Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Live Trader series, and I am just blowing through this. Uh, I just keep, well, while I'm reading it, I'm just like, right, just one more chapter, just one more chapter. Uh, it's... So when I started the book, I thought, hey, this is a pretty simple plot. So we have a family. Uh, the father just died, and his death has brought about uh, the creation or the awakening of a live ship. Uh, so three generations after they die on a ship made out of a special type of wood becomes a living entity. And of course, now that the father die has died, the control of the family has gone to the son-in-law, who is very narcissistic, does not listen to anybody, thinks he knows best for everyone, and uh, he is now controlling all of the finances of the family. And of course, he, he says he has good intentions, he's trying to get them out of debt, uh, but he's very controlling. All these different characters, and the, uh, the girl who believes that the ship belongs to her, because it's her fan, her, she considers it part of her family, and so the ship was kind of taken from her and she will do anything to get it back. Uh, we also have a pirate and we know that he's up to something that he has means uh, he has something that he wants to obtain and he'll do anything to do so. So I thought hey this seems pretty straightforward but there are so many secrets that are slowly and we're slowly learning about and I, I think Robin Hood did a great job of uh, pacing that really well is that we learned just enough Make me want to keep reading. It's like, oh, no, it's time for bed. No, I have to keep going. So I'm really enjoying this. It's great. Uh, the next book that I'm reading is The Crimson Campaign by Brian McClellan. And this is the second book in the Powder Mage trilogy. This follows, goes in a world where we have what we call powder mages who snort gunpowder in order to gain the advantage of shooting people. And we follow kind of a, the hero of the last book and kind of the aftermath of him doing something great that nobody seems to notice or care about. Uh, he is, I will say he's like famous in the world for his ability as a powder mage, but there certainly are some things that people are overlooking. And the last book that I picked up was Lodestar by Shannon Messenger, and this is the fifth book in The Keepers of the Lost City. This is the one that I'm listening to with my children. Here we're following Sophie, and she is trying to uncover a lot of mysteries and solve some problems in the Elvidge community that have been caused by this secret organization uh, that's not supposed to exist. Those are the books that I'm currently reading. 
and here's what I plan to pick up next. Next I plan to pick up The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Ingleton and this is the first book in the Lacarnus trilogy. I'm actually excited about this one when I kind of read the summary that it looks like that there there was a battle or a revolution that overthrew an empire and this is following like what happens in the aftermath and what happens to the people that lost and now like the new laws and everything that are in place because of overthrowing this government. So sounds interesting. I'm finding that I really like that trope a lot. And then I'll, after I'm done with after I'm done with Ship of Magic, I'm going to pick up What I Lost by Alexandria Ballard. This is a contemporary about someone who is anorexic and kind of everything that they go through when suffering from that disease. I guess I'll see how I like it. Sometimes these are sometimes these are done really well and sometimes they're not. So, but I'm excited to get to that. And then I've decided to pick up uh, the next book in the series of Sherlock Holmes. I've read the first two. And so this one is just The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes. And this is a collection of short stories. It's by uh, Arthur Conan Doyle. I think everybody knows what Sherlock Holmes is. This was the first profiling. All, a lot. I can see how a lot of detective shows and stuff use a lot of things from this. All right, so that is my weekly update. Those are all the books that I finished, the ones I'm currently reading, and everything I plan to pick up next. Uh, if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you guys all next time. Thanks, bye!